Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmad and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to read data from API in SSIS. So recently I got a lot of requests to create a video on this particular topic like how we can get the data from the API and we can insert the data into the SQL Server table. So that thing we will see in this particular video. But the one of the most important thing that I want to tell you is that every API is different and thus the code that will be required to call that API it will be different as well. But after looking at this particular video, you will get an idea like how we can write the code in SSIS to get the data from the API. So generally there are two types of API. The first one are the one those written the data in the XML format and the second one are the ones those written the data in the JSON format. So in old time, most of the APIs they were returning the data in the XML format. Okay, but currently majority of the API they return the data in the JSON format. So in today's video, I will show you how we can call the API that return the data in the JSON format and how we can consume the data and we can insert the data into the SQL Server table. Okay. So let's jump to the demo. So I got a link of this particular website which shows us the list of public APIs. Okay. So it provides you the list of free API that you can use for testing purpose. So this website provides the free API list of public API for testing. Okay. So if you scroll down. So there are different APIs like the first public API is this one get a list of any or all public API currently categorized in the project sample API URL. So we got different API like cat facts, coin desk, board. Okay. So we, we got different APIs here. Okay. So we will use this API the first public API. So if I open this one in a new page, so you can see that it returned the data in the JSON format. Okay. This is the data that it is returned. Okay. So we want to consume this data and want to insert this data into the SQL Server table. So in the JSON data, uh, we have some properties those we can consume like we got the API property here, then we got the description property here, okay, then we got the auth property here, we got the HTTPS, we got the core, we got the link and then we got the category. So these are the properties here, okay. So if you see here, this is the first line of data, okay. So now we need to uh, write the code in the C sharp, we need to create the a class and their properties okay to get the data from the JSON. So we can take help from the chat GPT to generate the code for us uh, for the class and for the properties okay. So what we can do we can write uh, write the class and property code for JSON data in C sharp okay. So I open the chat GPT here so if you have not opened then you can just make an account on this one and just open this one. So I can paste this line here and now we need to provide the some sample data okay. So if you see here after this comma the another line will start okay the API is the first property okay so you can see that this is the first property so API this is the first property this is another line okay so till here this is the first line so I can copy the first line and I can provide this data to the chat GPT so that it can analyze the data and it can generate the class and properties for us so if I press enter so it will provide you the code so it is creating the first class entry class and then it identified all the properties like the API property description auth, HTTPS all these properties okay. So we will use this code in the SSIS package. Now what I will do is that first I will create the C sharp console app okay and we'll use the C sharp console app will test the code like how it working and once the code works fine in the C sharp console app then I will move the code into the SSIS package. Because you know SSI script task and script component they take a lot of time to open it and it takes a lot of time to debug and test the code in the SSIS package. So if you are going to write some C sharp code then it's better that you can use the C sharp console app to test the code and once the code works fine then you can move the code to the SSIS package because it's very easy to debug the code in the C sharp console app. So first of all let me just try to create a C sharp console app and then we'll test the code there. So I can open the Visual Studio 2019 here. My solution name can be this one. I can copy the, this one. Create a new project. And now from here I will select the console app .NET framework. Now I can click next. I will select the location. So this is my location and I can paste the project name here. How to read data in API in maybe I can write C sharp. Okay. And I can click create. So this will create the C sharp console app for me. And 
right now there is no inbuilt code to get the data from the API in SSIS package so we would need to use the C sharp here. So C sharp console app has been created and this is the default code and now we need to write our code here okay. Here we will also be using the try and catch block so in case any error occur then if new file with the current date time will be created and it will have the error message so that we can easily identify the error and we can fix it okay. So let me open this one. So this is the couple of lines of code that I use for try and catch in all my C sharp code. Okay. So it is using some namespaces like maybe system.io. So I can click on show potential fixes using system.io. Okay. So these two variables they are related to logging. So in case if any error will occur, so it will create a log file at this location, D files logs. You can provide appropriate path according to the path on your machine. So when the error will occur then it will come to the catch block and it will create an error log underscore current date time dot log file at this location and it will have the actual error message in it okay the exception in it. Now we need to write the code to get the data from the API from the JSON okay. So I already written some code and that I will share with you and you can use it in your environment as well. So I will share the complete code with you okay so I can copy this one the code and I can paste it here in the try block. So it seems like it is missing some namespaces here so I can hover my mouse on this one show potential fixes using system.net and uh, okay so so now here it needs the classes that we generated in the chat GPT so I can copy the class code from here two classes I can copy from here and I can paste it outside of the our main class okay so I pasted the class code here okay and uh, one of the class was root so I can just rename this one JSON data with the root okay. So now we got the root class here and we got the root dot entries so we got the entry yeah entry class here as well. Now it seems like it is missing the namespace for the debug class show potential fixes diagnostics okay so this is all gone. Now it seems like we are missing just one namespace here and this is for the JSON so to read the JSON data we need the Newton soft extension okay so if you see here install package Newton soft dot json so you need to go there the first option find and install latest version so you can click on this one and now you can see installing Newton soft dot json so the Newton soft extension got installed here so this is used to deserialize the json data so our code is complete here okay now what I can do I can put a breakpoint and I can just show you like reading the couple of lines of data and it can be uh, visible to the output window. So once we will test it then uh, I will write the code to write the data into the SQL server table okay. So let me put a breakpoint here and then show you like how it will work. So I can uh, put a breakpoint using the F9 as well okay. So I can click on the start button and this will start running the C sharp console app code okay now what you can do you can uh, step over or you can press F10 as well to debug the code okay so in these lines we are just getting the data from the URL and the data will be re read into a string variable so if you see here the data got downloaded and it downloaded 1425 records and this is the data from the URL from the API now if you press F10 so now the data got deserialized here and if you see this root object so you can see that total 1425 records got downloaded and these are the data. So if you see the first data so this is the value like the API is this one, auth is this one, the category is animals, course is years, description is this one, HTTP is true, link is this one okay. So this is the data. So if you just press F10 so it will just write the data to the output window okay. So we can open the output window I am just showing you like how you can debug it and see like what what is actually happening here. So this is the data you know API is this one so this is one record okay and similarly if you just uh, click on continue so it will write the another record as well okay. So now it has written two records so if you see the output window now so you can see another record so this is the second record. So this is how it is, we can read the data from the API. Now let us do one thing that we can write the data into the uh, SQL server table. So this is my SQL server management studio and I have already created a table here JSON data okay and I will share this create table statement as well with you so that you can 
use the same one in your SSIS package as well. So if I execute this query, so right now the JSON data table is empty. So I created the table with the like uh, the where care or whatever type is required, I have created it according to the data. Now what I can do, I can go back to the uh, C Sharp console app and now instead of displaying the data here, what we can do, we can write the data into the SQL server table. Okay. So I have actually already written the code and uh, let me copy this code and let me paste it here. So maybe after this one, I can paste the code here and uh, you can just, uh, you know, uh, comment out this code. Now, because we don't want to display the code, we want to insert the data into the SQL server table. So let me just close this one so that we can take a closer look at the code. So it is missing some namespaces using system dot SQL data client. Okay. So this is the code to insert the data into the SQL server table. So this is my SQL server instance name. This is my database name and we are using the windows authentication here. Okay. And now we are just opening the connection writing the data into the SQL server table JSON data okay and just doing the execute non query so this will insert the data into the SQL server table so now what I can do I can just simply uncheck this one and I can execute this code and it should insert the data into the SQL server table from the API so let's wait there are 1400 and I think 25 records so, so the process ran fine and if I go back to the SSMS and if I execute this query so you can see that the data got inserted to the SQL server table. Okay. So yeah, this is one of the method to insert the data into the SQL server table using the API. Now what I can do, I can just truncate the table. So right now the table is empty. Now if you want to use the same code inside the SSIS package, then one of the most important thing is that uh, you need to expand the references and you can see a reference here to the newtonsoft.json DLL. So you can go to the properties of this DLL and uh, you can just copy the path from here. Okay. Because whatever DLL we are using, we need to register that DLL to the GAC in the, if you want to use the DLL in the SSIS package. Okay. So what you can do, uh, you can write like GAC util hyphen I, I is for the installation and then you can put the DLL path in the double quote. Okay. And then you need to register this DLL to the GAC. So how you can register it? You can open this one. So if you whatever version of Visual Studio you have, you need to go into that particular version. So right now I have Visual Studio 2019. So I will go to this folder, Visual Studio 2019. And then we need to open developer command prompt for VS 2019 more run as administrator. You, you need to select this option. Click yes. So now the console app got opened in the admin mode and now you need to copy this particular line. I will share this line as well with you and you can paste it here, press enter. So now you can see that assembly successfully added to the cache. So the assembly has been added to the cache. Now you can use this code, the Newton soft extension. Now you can use inside the SSIS package. Otherwise, if you will try to use it without adding the DLL, this DLL to the gag, then it won't run from the SSIS package. Okay. So now what you can do, uh, you can create a SSIS package now. So I can open the Visual Studio 2019 and then I will show you like creating a package, create a new project and uh, from here you need to select the integration services project. So we can select the integration services project and uh, uh, we can give a name to the integration services project. So maybe I can give this name, I can paste the name here and I can click on create so that it will create a SSIS package for us, the empty SSIS package for us. So the SSIS package got created. Now we need to use the script task to execute the code which is written in the C sharp. So I can just drag and drop the script task into the control flow window. And now I can right click and I can click on edit and I need to click on the edit script so that the script editor window can be opened. Alright, so the script editor window has been opened up. Now what I can do, I can go back to the C-Sharp console app and I need to copy everything from the main method. So from here, uh, I will copy till this code and I can paste the code here. Okay, so I copied everything from the main method and now I will go back and I will copy the two classes as well, the entry class and the root class and I will paste it here in the... so. 
if you see the namespaces here so after the namespaces you can paste it you know inside the namespace you can copy the and paste the this these two classes okay so now i can go back to the c sharp console app and i need to copy the dlls as well so i will copy the dll till here i will ignore the newton soft dll and the system one because system one is already there i think and newton soft it will be added automatically so i can paste the dlls here so now all the errors are gone and there is only one error and it is on the json convert so this should be for the uh, newton soft so i will click on show potential fixes and you can see here install package for the newton soft or uh, sometimes the first time you might not seen this option here so you need to come back maybe after a couple of minutes you need to come back and you should see an option here install package newton soft so i will select the first option and now it is installing the newton soft or json okay so first time if you don't see the option then come second time here okay so now all the errors are gone and it seems good and i can click on file exit and i can click on ok so this will save the code inside the ssis package so our ssis package is ready to be run and i will go back to the ssms and i can click execute to make sure that we don't have any data in the json data table now i will click on start button and the ssis package should execute so the package is running right now so the package got completed and let me go back to the ssms and select the data now so you can see that all 1425 records got imported here from the api yeah, so this was one of the method to import the data from the api that returns the data in the json format okay so as i already told you that the code that will be written to fetch the data from each api it will be different okay but the steps will be almost same if the api is returning the data in the json format now if the api is returning the data in another format like in the xml format or in any other format then the code will be different okay but majority of the time like whatever company have the api they provide you the code so the other day i written the code where we can fetch the data from the google api from the geocode api google geocode api where you pass the addresses as an input and it return you the latitude and longitude and i also written some code where we can fetch the data from the uh, bing api as well it's from the microsoft okay so we have tons of api and the code to call each api is different but uh, the code that will be used to, to call these apis like the apis which return the data in the json format they will be almost same but the classes can be different like the classes and the properties can be different and you can take help from the chat gpt to you know to just uh, create the classes and the uh, properties for you if you will provide the some sample data to it okay so i think this can also be used to, to get help from yeah, so i think that's it for today's video and i will share all the code that i used here all the code i will share with you all the links create table statement c sharp code and the code to register the dll as well i will share everything with you and you can test it in your environment yeah so i think that's it for today's video Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much